Hi again, everybody. Uh, just wanted to touch base with you again. Um, first thing I'm just going to talk about briefly is uh, my the facts assessment. As before, I've been trying for a while to get that, you know, since I uh, got my diagnosis in December. Um, unfortunately, that turned out to be a complete bust because. Um, hmm. Had the interview over the phone and everything, um, and the guy said to me, uh, "You need to talk to your GP and get them to refer you to social services." Um, okay, uh, I thought I'd already kind of been referred anyway, but uh, he was the guy that knew what he was talking about, but. Um, Yeah, I got in touch with the woman who I'd been, you know, talked to the first time, the person who I was initially told would do my facts assessment, and uh, she said, I'm very sorry you've been told this, uh, this, is, this isn't this is correct, um, leave it with me and I'll sort it out. Uh, she gets back to me um, by the end of the following week. Apparently... Um, the facts assessment it is all about determining what kind of well pretty much in home support someone requires um, basically determine people's level of independence you know if they can clean themselves clone them clothe themselves um, cook for themselves etc um, which of course I don't need any help with um, which I think is blooming stupid because the you know, the woman said, you know, when she came to see me, I think you need to have a facts assessment. Even though I told, you know, the guy on the phone all the things that I told her. So I don't know why she would think that I needed a facts assessment. Um, and then the guy who does the fact assessment says to me that I don't need any support that they provide at all. So I'm kind of uh, at the square one, really. Uh, she's due to come around my house again next Tuesday um, for another meeting, like the first one. You know, we can talk about stuff that went on there. Um, but when I went to the job centre, I told them about what had happened and that I wanted to um, see about being assessed for um, possibly getting the disability living allowance. And they said, yeah, we'll just go downstairs, um, get the form and send it off. So I go downstairs. Apparently, they don't use the form anymore. You ring a number and ask them to send you a form which is kind of stupid and a bit of a waste of manpower, but, yeah. Um, so I've done that. Uh, form should be coming to me soon, so you know, I've just got to fill that all out and send it off to them, and hopefully, you know, fingers crossed, I will qualify for what is now known as the personal independence payment, because they don't, they don't call it disability living allowance anymore. It's probably uh, trying to be politically correct or something. new uh, cigar I haven't tried before today, the Rittmister's Mini Moods. One of the few cigars I've come across that has a filter. This was a pretty big filter too, like almost half, well it's not, it's not really a cigar, it's a cigarillo. A lot of smoke on it. And today I'm trying something else new. It's a Koiko chocolate milk drink. Mmm, very rich. Mm. 
Doch ein Workshop ist das. But yeah, uh, other thing I kind of wanted to talk about, which is probably, you know, seeing I'm taking out the bulk of the video because I'm only five minutes in here, but, uh, the death of Leonard Nimoy. Um, I wanted to talk about it sooner, but this is the first opportunity I've had to, you know, get in my car and come out somewhere. Um, yeah, I've been a f fan of Star Trek since 2006. I'd seen bits of The Next Generation beforehand and I hadn't liked it, so um, I knew about, you know, Kirk and Picard and all of that, but I'd only ever seen Picard and I didn't particularly like Picard very much and I'm still not very keen on him. Uh, my mum thought she was going to buy the original series box set because um, she'd grown up watching it as a kid and she you know over the you know the last few years she's been buying lots of box sets of stuff from, you know from the 60s and the 70s and you know the 50s and whatnot um but I suppose it's more than a few years ago now because it's uh, almost 10 years ago good lord but yeah um I watched Star Trek the original series with her um as I just thought, uh, you know, I liked a lot of the stuff that my mum watched anyway, and I'd seen, I'd, I loved sci-fi anyway, and from what I'd seen of Star Trek, it had been alright, just not, you know, particularly great, so I'll, I'll give uh, the original series a try and have a watch of that. My God, it was great. You know, I loved, I loved, you know, all the, you know, the, the sets that they built, you know, the decor and everything. Uh, this is really bright here, so I hope it's not completely washing out the entire video, because it looks pretty washed out on the cams. Phone screen anyway, but yeah. Uh, this again. Uh, you know, I liked the look of the ship. Um, I liked the uniforms, I liked, you know, the sound effects, the music and everything. You know, this, this is proper vintage sci-fi. Um, one of the first, you know, proper, uh, you know, pucker sci-fi shows that have been on television, as far as I was, it sort of kick-started um, a lot of stuff. Uh, and it was a really enjoyable show to watch. You know, I liked all the story. I mean, obviously, it being the 1960s, some of the things weren't great in terms of, you know, props and effects and whatnot, and sometimes, you know, it was quite obvious that it was just, you know, a plastic suit, and there were some of the aliens and monsters that were just frankly ridiculous, but, uh, you know, that's part of the whole, you know, you know, vintage campy sci-fi appeal, um, and, you know, I pretty much became obsessed with Star Trek from then, you know, I watched Deep Space No, was it Deep Space Deep Space? Uh, I've been, you know, watching Voyager on Sky One, because they used to show a lot of Star Trek in those days. And then Virgin came out with their new television channel. Which which they were touting as being the home of the new home of Star Trek. So I thought yeah, Deep Space Nine is the only show that I haven't seen before. I had, you know, I watched all of Enterprise, watched a lot of Voyager, um, and a fair amount of the original series. So I still haven't seen all of it, which I'm kind of ashamed of, and I do have to rectify. Uh, so. I said, yeah, I'm going to watch this show because one of my friends that I met online uh, in a Star Trek fan community, um, it was her favourite show and uh, I like um, it, it, everything to do with, you know, with the starships and Deep Space Nine has a, a big interstellar war, in it, you know, for quite a large chunk of the of the show uh, and I thought you know that would be awesome I'd love to see that and everything see what you know Federation ships um, in combat and stuff a bit more often and it, it quite quickly became my favorite um, 
series of the whole franchise. Uh, but the original series is you know, still has a, a pretty big place in my heart, and you know, for, for the pure aesthetics of it, it you know, I it's it's kind of it's, it's kind of weird. Um, I like you know vintage stuff you know like old computers you know old televisions you know radios cars fashion um and everything it's like so i like the vintage of now and i also like the vintage of the future which is kind of weird um i like all of the ship types um you know the older ones. You know from these from the Star Trek the original series from the X era, which is from um, the end of the movies up until the start of the Next Generation, because there's a big gap in the middle where they did nothing, and that the the X era that has only been touched on in you know fan cons fan tele shows on the web and um, books and stuff. Is my is you know is my favourite period in terms of you know starship design and stuff, uh, and I, d I I have a lot of respect for the original crew characters as well as the actors and actresses that they that, you know that they cast for the roles. You know each and every one of them. Um, you know, you know, has done something to advance, you know, some sort of so social cause. Be it Nichelle Nichols playing Lieutenant Uhura, um, who, you know, in Whoopi Goldberg's words, uh, you know, pretty much the first black woman on television who wasn't no maid. Um, she had a position of responsibility on the Enterprise, whereas, um, you know. You know, up until then, black people had been re represented quite negatively um, in television and movies and stuff. Um, and, you know, Uhura was seen as a strong, independent female character, uh, which even, you know, even, you know, white women in media in those days weren't usually portrayed as being strong and independent. Um, and... Even Martin Luther King in liked what she was doing, and when she decided, at one point she just, she decided that she was going to give up and go back uh, and, and to do theatre work because that, that that's what you know that's where her heart was. She loved doing theatre, but um, when she went to a, a rally that um, that Martin Luther King was at, he he came to see her and he said, "I've heard that you've been um, considering." giving up on Star Trek, you can't do that. Um, you're doing such good work um, advancing, you know, the, posi the position of black people socially that uh, for you to stop doing that would be very detrimental to our cause. And she took that to heart and, you know, thankfully decided to carry on doing it. Um, and, I, I, you know, I like... Uhura's character, you know, the original series of Uhura, the, uh, the the new movies are another matter entirely, and I don't like talking about them. Um, but she was a very, you know, very good, interesting character, um, and I think Gene Roddenberry has, you know, has, has a lot to. You know, it's a good legacy for Gene that he's. Done, you know, such good with you know ethnic minority characters, female characters, and you know, in a, probably in a lot of cases, made people think more positively of them because of the way he portrayed them in primary roles. And he, he even cast um, George Takei. You know, he was one of my favourite people in the world. You know, I follow him on you know Twitter, Facebook, Tumblr. Everything. He's, you know, he's a really, really amazing person. Um, you know, this is in the you know the 1960s. America still hated the Japanese, and yet he was a main character in um, a big show. And then, of course. In series, no, in series two, they introduced Chekhov, played by uh, Walter Koenig, 
who is a Russian character. You know, in the 1960s, Americans hated the Russians. You know, the, you know, the, the enemy, you know, the evil red commies. And again, you know, a main character in a television series, you know, was you know, breaking barriers with that. They're trying to, um, you know, improve people's perceptions of them and stuff. And, you know, apparently, you know, people, um, obviously a few people were going to question it, but there weren't really many, you know, there weren't any complaints about it from, from what I understand. So, you know, people weren't um, questioning it because, it, you know, it had been presented as some sort of utopian society where everybody was equal. And uh, Gene Roddenberry was actually arrested on suspicion of being a communist because of the, you know, the free and fair society with no currency that he created in the world of Star Trek. Uh, which is frankly ridiculous. Um, just because society is free and fair, the Americans automatically assume it's communist. But, yeah, uh, and even, you know, even the actors themselves, they had a big part to play in that. Um, I've heard that um, Walter Koenig, uh, when he found out that um, that Nichelle Nichols, who played Ahura, was being paid less than everybody else, yeah, you, know, um, you know, Leonard was known as. You know, I mean, in an interview where he talked about it, he sort of described. Um, him as the, you know, the captain of, out of the actors, you know, if anybody ever had a problem, you know, they went and talked to Leonard about it, and, um, you know, he would, he would deal with it, because, you know, he wanted to make, you know, make sure that everything was, was fair for people, and so when, um, Walter told him that he discovered that Nichelle wasn't being paid fairly, he marched right down to the, uh, to the office, and set it right, which, you know, putting himself out in that way to make sure that one of his fellow colleagues received fair treatment, you know, in the, you know, in the 1960s at the height of uh, institutionalised racism and sexism, uh, I'd say good on for that. He'd done a lot to encourage uh, young people to get into science. I mean, after um, the original series got cancelled, um, some of them, you know, got other, you know, got jobs doing other things. But because he was, he was sort of, you know, the science guy, um, he, you know, been, you know, guested on a lot, you know, science programs uh, and. You know, doing all sorts of things to encourage people to go into, you know, the science industry and encouraging, you know, education and so on. Um, and a lot of people, you know, in the industries today, you know, be they scientists, you know, in industry, at universities, you know, people working at NASA uh, and the various other um, space agencies around the world, they often cite you know, Spock and Leonard Nimoy's later efforts after the series got cancelled as their primary inspiration for going into that and there's probably a few inventions in, um, you know, be they medical, you know, electronic engineering, etc. that, you know, wouldn't have come to fruition without his encouragement of the sciences. Um, so I have a lot of respect for him for that. Um, and I always like it when someone, you know, is in a position of influence like that, um, will use that influence in a positive way to encourage their fan base and, you know, um, to, you know, better themselves and better the world in the case of science. Um, all the Star Trek characters have done, um, you know, some pretty nice things. I mean, you've got Bill Shatner, which you know sometimes he's seen a bit as a bit of an arrogant, 
pass. Uh, uh, well, I, I've, I, I know that James Dewan, the man who played Scotty, I mean, he'd been in the war beforehand, you know, the, you know, the, the D-Day landings, he got, you know, several fingers shot off before he'd even gotten off the boat. Um, in the 1990s, it was either the 80s or the 90s, he got a, a letter from a fan which was effectively a suicide note. So, um, the girl had left, but she must have left her phone number on the letter because he'd called her up. Um, he, he said he, he called her up and he said to her, I am, going to, I am going to be in a convention in two weeks. I want you to be there. I want to see you. And you know, we told her where it was, and you know, thankfully she had the money to go. And he goes to the um, to the convention, and you know, he looks for her. And you know, and she approaches him, and he and he says that she definitely seemed like somebody who was on the edge, you know, major depression problems. Um, and you know, he just you know sat and he talked to her. Um, you know about the show, you know about her life, you know her dreams and so on. And he said, in another two weeks, I'm going to another convention in New York. I want you to be there. I want to see you there. And yeah, two weeks later, the convention in New York. He sees her. You know, they talk. And he says again, you know, next month I'm being I'm in a convention in Las Vegas. I want to see you there. You know, thankfully, she had enough money to be jetting all over the country coming to him. And you know, he said that that went on for, you know, two, three years. You know, meeting up with her at conventions, um, telling her, you know, that he wants to see her at the next one. And when the one, one time he, um, she doesn't sh she, you know, she, you know, writing to him and everything, um, and then. You know, the letters suddenly stop. He doesn't see it here at the next convention. He can't write to her because you know he's mislaid her contact details, and you know he's you know pretty worried about you know what's going to happen. Um, and then one day he gets you know you know years later he gets a letter out of the blue saying. I was the girl who, um, you know, you, who, you know, who you were looking after. You know, I just want to, to thank you. Um, I've just completed my PhD in um, electronic engineering, and I'm, you know, I'm going to work for a big company. And he said that that letter made him so happy. That he cried, and I just think that you know that's that's really nice and a testament to to him and Star Trek and the sort of um, ethos that Gene Roddenberry and the other actors inspired in each other. That he's able to go and save this girl's life, prevent her from killing herself at the worst time in her life, and then she goes on to do something positive after recovering. Um, you know, there's there's plenty of stories about stuff like that um, with Star with the Star Trek actors and stuff. And you know, I've seen other in lots of other you know media that some of the others have done. And you know, George Takei has done a hell of a lot for advancing. Um, the LGBT cause in America, you know, and by extension around the world, you know, attending rallies, protesting, you know, joining gay pride marches as a special, uh, you know, celebrity guest and everything. And he just seems like one of the nicest people in the world. You know, I've, um, he's he's really, really gotten the hang of you know the social media revolution as a way of. Um, Getting in touch with his fans, you know, um, positively influencing them, and 
letting them know about things that, that the media might not necessarily be reporting. I mean, he, he was talking about all the, all the stuff that was going on you know, with Ferguson and Mike Brown. Um, he's always, you know, posting articles about, um, you know, when state legisl legislators bring, bring in a law that, um, you know, is anti-gay. He encourages his his um, his fan base to oppose these you know these laws and you know these institutions um, and the you know and you know homophobia and you know transphobia and racism as you know, as much as they can and you know I I, I you know I read a lot of the stuff that he posts I mean he's he, he had made a a musical called Allegiance, um, which is about his experience of being in a Japanese American internment camp, camp during World War Two. And this is stuff that a lot of people don't know because it's not taught in schools. It's it's you know it's um, something that's kind of glossed over. Maybe because you know I mean, maybe Americans might be ashamed of it, but um, probably you know that they don't you know they they'd rather it was forgotten, but. Um, after the Japanese bombed Pearl Harbor, um, the president signed an executive order setting up um, internment camps for people of um, Japanese American ancestry. I mean, it doesn't matter if you were an immigrant. It doesn't matter if you were born in this con in, in the country. It doesn't matter matter if you know your family had emigrated. You know more than a hundred years ago and you were like third or fourth or fifth generation American if you looked even remotely Japanese you were sent to one of these internment camps and George you know relays quite graphically you know what happened when his family were effectively arrested and put on a train to one of these internment camps and they spent years there uh, And the musical um, is all you know, is all about raising awareness for that. So, but people don't forget this important chapter in American history. And he he went on the Daily Show um, to talk about it. And um, yeah, I, I definitely view George Takei as a force for good in the world. Um, he, I mean, he, his fans called him Uncle George because they love him so much. And, and you know that's just what Star Trek is it brings people together you know no matter who you are no matter where you are you know if if you like if you like Star Trek you you know you, you can always find a friend and someone who can help you through you know you know bad spots in your life like James Doohan did for that girl, and George Takei is trying to do with, you know, gay and transgender and intersex people in America. But, you know, whenever, whenever one of the cast members dies, uh, it's always you know, something that that you feel because. You know, I really liked Spock's character on, on you know, on Star Trek, and Leonard Nimoy, he, he, you know, he seemed like a really nice guy from the other stuff that I'd seen, and you know, to hear that sort of uh, when people think of Star Trek, he's one of the he's one of the characters that comes to mind first. He's like you know the mascot of Star Trek, you know, with his with his pointy ears, his eyebrows, and a Vulcan salute. Peace and long life. Live long and prosper. And I'd heard, I'd seen the news the night before that he'd had a heart attack and been taken to hospital. And I thought, oh, Boy, he's getting on a bit now, and 
Uh, I, I don't know why, but I was pretty much certain that he wasn't going to leave the hospital alive. And I turned out to be right. And, you know, the next day, you know, wake up. You know, going to do my usual stuff. And then BBC Breaking News pops up in my Twitter feed. Star Trek actor Leonard Nimoy dead at 83. Mm, I felt pretty bad about that. And a lot of people did, you know, you see the old, you know, the tributes pouring in for him, you know, on Twitter and Facebook and Tumblr. You know, it was like when Robin Williams died, there was a lot of stuff posted about him on Tumblr. You know, photo sets going around, people, you know, editing photos and um, posting photos of, you know, places from the movies that he'd been in. Um, you know, talking you know, his quotes about suicide from the movie he did in the 90s um, people doing the you know, same thing about um, you know, with Leonard Nimoy in the last tweet he wrote I mean I can't remember it now which is typical and annoying but it was, you know, it was very pithy um, and it was you know fitting a fitting last tweet for him um You know, I mean, I, I play Star Trek Online, and you know, I've done for several years now, and pretty quickly the community came together and decided we need to do something for this. And um, a lot of people, uh, they said, you know, right, what we're going to do is we're going to all meet up on, on planet Vulcan, we're going to gather around the fountain outside the temple of Arnak, and we're going to stand to attention and pay tribute to Leonard. You know, so everybody did that. Uh, several instances of the game world were, were completely filled, and you know, that, you know that's you know that's how it works. If, if a particular world has got too many people in it, there'll be another one. Um, you know, where the where the extra people will go, and then there'll be another. Um, instance created for the other people, and uh, there were—I I don't know how many different instances were filled up. But when in the one that I was in, there were literally dozens of people on Vulcan standing around this fountain, um, you know, typing out stuff in the in the chat box, uh, standing to attention, saluting. Uh, giving the Vulcan salute, you know, meditating, you know, their character models and stuff, and I mean, of course, they were they were idiot idiots who were doing stupid stuff, um, but you know, they were booted pretty quickly. Uh, and community campaigned for some form of permanent memorial for him um, and the developers decided that they were going to put statues in the places where the community had congregated um, so, so you know, there's now a statue in the middle of the fountain on Vulcan um, there's a statue on Kronos which is the Klingon homeworld and there's also a statue on New Romulus where you know the Romulan characters gathered um, and I felt it was very fitting. Mm. Yeah. Of course, you had you know tributes flowing in on the forums. Um, people, you know, doing you know getting together and doing special things in game. You know, I, I know I uh, I donned my. 23rd century uniform, got my crew kitted out in it, um, pulled out my original series Enterprise ship, and, you know, just flew around the galaxy, uh, defending the Federation in his honour for a while.
I, 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 I did Spock. Spock. Spock was definitely one of my favourite characters. I mean, you know, what sort of started watching Star Trek when I was 16. Uh, I mean, properly watching it. Um, you know, and then, yeah, pretty soon I got obsessed with it. You know, wanted to watch all the movies, play all the games. When I watched um, Star Trek II The Wrath of Khan, which is my personal favourite Star Trek movie, uh, you know, Spock dies in it. Um, and, and there was a very moving funeral scene in that movie. And uh, I will admit, I actually cried when I watched it, you know. 16 year old guy crying for over the uh, death of a fictional character, but yeah. Mm. Definitely you know, the sort of show that will do that to you. I, you know, I get attached to uh, fictional characters. Uh, Obviously, some more than others, and uh, Spock was one of them. But then, of course, they brought him back in the next movie. Uh, yeah. Thank you, sir, for doing a really good job of acting that character and all the things you did post Star Trek to. Better the world. I'm sure you I'm sure he knew how appreciated he was. Though he was very modest about it. He's, he'll definitely be missed. I said that the uh, video that I made in January, I hope nobody nobody else dies this year, but it uh, didn't take long for somebody else. I think it was maybe less than a month after I made that video that Leonard died. Mm. Yeah, that was the main thing I wanted to talk about today, Leonard Nemo. probably make another video uh, not next Tuesday but the Tuesday after because that's when I'll be going to the job centre again and I'll be out in the car uh, I don't like making videos at home it's not not particularly private uh, but yeah I think I'll probably make this a regular thing I uh, I wanted to make my old videos a regular thing, you know, where I was reviewing games and hardware and stuff, but uh, I got too lazy, especially when uh, there weren't many views. But you know, this it's uh, you know, it's simple, it's easy. I can, you know, talk about stuff that I wouldn't necessarily otherwise get the opportunity to talk about. Yeah. I think it could be a good thing for me. Help get things off my chest. Anyway. To everybody out there watching. Are you a Star Trek fan or not? Be you, you know, cis, transgendered, intersex, gay, lesbian, Bisexual, pansexual, demisexual, asexual, aromantic. And apologies if I missed anybody off. Probably did. But anyway, anybody else who you know, comes under the banner that uh, Leonard Nimoy and George Decay would have supported. Peace.
and long life. May you live long and prosper.